Okay, well, welcome everyone. So we've got some new faces and some people who have been many times, which is great to see. I've done last, on Monday night, I did the same in uh, Sydney, last night in Adelaide, because I was trying to get some perspective about what percentage of sales everybody's been getting eBay compared to Amazon. So, and we, we're traditionally seeing normally around about 15 to 30% for the professional sellers. And, I, and that's why I say over a thousand, because I'm kind of looking for people who are professional sellers. But Okay, we'll ask the same question tomorrow night in Brisbane and uh, get some kind of balance. Okay, so anyway, for those who haven't been to one of these events before, we're all about these four values. Sharing, networking, learning and community. So we're all here, you know, we're all doing the same thing, selling online and we're all here to share ideas and help each other. Our vision, our purpose, like it says on here, is to help more and more people to learn to live the internet lifestyle, which is being able to work from home or your favourite coffee shop or wherever, using the technology that we're all blessed to have today. We no longer have to go to an office or work five days a week and get two days off. Though whoever set those rules, I don't know who, what they were thinking, but <laughs> we don't have to do that anymore. So if you are a full-time eBay or Amazon seller, um, and anyone asks you any questions tonight, please take a little bit of time to help them out because everyone was a beginner at one time. And we do have quite a lot of full-time sellers here tonight. Um, I'll show of hands, who here is selling is full-time at the moment? Okay. You guys must be getting close down there, weren't you? Yeah, <laughs> you should be full-time, okay. All right. So tonight we are about beginners, um, but please, anyone who's got, is already uh, selling, please take some, a little bit of time out to help others. So what's coming up? We do a whole lot of um, events. So tonight we can't cover all these topics because obviously we would not, none of us would be going home tonight if we try to cover all these topics. So tonight we're going to try and stay on subject, on, on track, uh, which is all about FBA for beginners. We'll take as many questions as we possibly can. If we start running out of time, I'll have to cull the questions. But while we're in time, we'll take as many questions as, as I can. Um, Okay, so as it says here, this is your group and we are all here to help each other. So, and anyone else who's also selling um, and they've got any feedback they can give to the group, feel free to share anything that you guys want to share as well. We all are here under the same umbrella. Now, all the links and all these slides are available for everyone for free to download, so you don't have to write everything down. There's a link here and I'll also put the link up at the end of the presentation tonight, so you can download all the slides and all the links that I'm going to give you. If I use any words tonight, please, that you don't understand, please tell me. You know, I've been doing this now, selling online for over 20 years, and you ten, do tend to use words that people don't know or have, have a clue what you're talking about. So if I do use any words, please tell me, and, you know, just stop me. So don't be scared of putting your hand up and asking. So who am I? I'm an eBay, Amazon seller. Um, I've been importing for just over 30 years, selling online for just over 20 years. I started, I went full time with this, basically uh, out of desperation because I was uh, separated from my ex-wife, I had two kids and I didn't want to get a job and I needed more money. Um, so I started in desperation and, and started in Sydney and got a, f a first warehouse in Sydney. And then these days, uh, we don't live in Sydney anymore, we live on a farm uh, four hours north of Sydney and we have no staff and no inventory on the property at all. Everything's run totally virtual. We have our VAs or our virtual assistants all overseas and the majority of all our VAs work from their homes. So we have, um, and that's how we run the whole shebang these days. All right, so tonight's all about how to sell on FBA. So tonight we're going to cover what is FBA, what to sell on Amazon FBA, where to source products, how to source products, um, how to get started from the beginning, optimization. I'm only going to touch on optimization tonight because it is a beginner and I don't want everyone's eyes to glass over if I start going down too much of the optimization stuff, but I'm going to give you enough to be dangerous. Also, there are tools and automation because the whole idea of this is to build a business that works without you. And a lot of people forget this and they get started on selling online and they just do everything themselves and they, they hit a, a glass ceiling because they can't go any higher because they've run out of hours. And the whole idea is you learn a task, then you outsource and you spend 10% of your profits on virtual assistance, which you can get from $1 per hour. And I'll give you the links tonight so you can know exactly where to get them from $1 an hour. So if you can do a task, you can record your screen and you can outsource it and more. Okay, so what is Amazon? Amazon, 
for those who aren't aware, is that it continually grows and grows and grows and grows. And this is about how many Amazon Prime households. And I'm going to talk about what Amazon Prime is tonight because it's a very vital part of Amazon. So Amazon, though, is a source of abundant traffic. So you can list items on Amazon just like eBay, and it's a source of a whole lot of eyeballs so you can see your products. So some people will say, yeah, but Amazon and eBay, it's expensive to sell on. Well, look at the amount of people who can look at your products and buy them. And that's what you're paying for, as opposed to putting them in some small newspaper, which has got a fraction of the audience. It's put on Amazon, and people all over the planet can see your products. Amazon's growth, as you can see, just keeps going up and up and up every year. There's a familiar face. Okay. Um, last data I've got from Amazon is this. Um, US, of course, up here, Australia here. Now, this is getting a bit old, so we are probably somewhere up here, but I haven't got any more latest data from that. So I'm going to be showing you all the slides tonight, um, some of them from Australia and, and quite a few from the US, because that's the best data I've got. All right, so Amazon, though, is only new to Australia. Back in 2016, Amazon first came out here at, as they're doing a pilot, and I did the roadshow with them in 2016. Was anyone here for that before Amazon opened when we did the roadshow? A couple of people here, okay. So that was before Amazon, that was the first time Amazon came to Australia. We did a roadshow right around Australia. And that was, um, and that was actually done here at one of the events. Okay, so that was 2016. In 2017, Amazon opened its, opened its doors in the first warehouse, which was in Dandenong, in Victoria, of course. And then the second one is open now in Moorbank in Sydney. So what is Amazon FBA? FBA, of course, stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. In other words, you send your product to Amazon and they hold it, they warehouse it for you and then they sh can ship it for you, it gets sold. So basically, if you own this, you, have, you can send it out yourself, which is called FBM, Fulfillment by Merchant. In other words, you guys, it sells, and you put it in the post or the courier and send it out. With FBA, you send it to an Amazon warehouse, they warehouse it, and when it sells, they pick it, pack it, and ship it. Is everyone clear on that? It's a pretty integral graph. Do we have anyone from Amazon here tonight? That's willing to put their hands up and own up. <laughs> we got one person. Okay, awesome. Can I ask what part of Amazon you? Uh, which part of Amazon do you work for? I work for Amazon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does anyone here work for Amazon? Because they know you're going to get swamped at the end of this. <laughs> you put your own, right? No worries. Okay. Um, so the Amazon, you send your products. Um, they ship your orders. So why have an Amazon FBA business? There's a whole multitude of why have an Amazon business. So let's get started. It's your own business, of course. You, it's your rules. It's your business. Create a passive income, which means items sell 365, 24 hours a day, all year round, and money continually flows in. It's a passive income. They warehouse your inventory, so you no longer have to have your own warehouse. Now, in saying this, you can also do the same thing for eBay, for the, you know, the eBay sells in there, but I can really do that as well with eBay, because you can, you can have a, a fulfillment house. But they warehouse your inventory for you. When we started, we had to, our house got filled up with inventory, our spare rooms got filled up, our attic got filled up, you know, our garage was filled up, I even bought an old 40 cubic metre um, Pantec truck, which had just under a million kilometres, parked that in our back driveway, filled that up, and then we eventually you know, bit the bullet and got a warehouse. So, these days, that's old fashioned. You don't have to do that anymore. You don't require an office anymore because it's all virtual. Amazon does all the reporting. They do all the. Can't, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, they do all the wrapping and the shipping. No shipping products because Amazon does it all for you. You don't drive the post office. Anyone who's done that knows that's a real pain in the backside to continually drive the post office every day. But even though, once you're spending $45 a day with Australia Post, you can get them to come pick up from your house. No negotiating rates with courier companies, because of course Amazon's got great rates with courier companies already. They look after your customer support, which is different to eBay. So any customer inquiries, Amazon looks after them, including returns. You can work from anywhere, a coffee shop, your house, a tent, a cruise ship, it doesn't matter, anywhere you've got internet, which is pretty much worldwide now with sat phones. 
Work your own hours, work your own days. Um, yeah, you simply choose what days to work. Like, you know, Wednesdays, for instance, is my day I fly, my, I fly my model planes, and, and uh, that's my flying day, is Wednesday. So you, you don't have to work the days, and you can, you know, if you want to pick the kids up from school, you can do all that kind of stuff. You can over 90% outsource it. You can get everything, listing, research, all that kind of stuff can be all done fully automated. Diversification, which I'm going to talk about later tonight. So you don't have to have all your eggs in one basket. If you've already got a bricks and mortar store, you can also sell on Amazon, you can also sell on eBay, but I'll get more into all the different diversification aspects later tonight. You can also, with Amazon FBA, fulfill website orders. So you send all your goods to, or some of your goods to an Amazon warehouse, and when an order comes in, you log into Amazon Seller Central, and you get Amazon to pick, pack, and ship direct to your customers. For your, web, for your own website sales. <coughs> all right, um, done that. Um, and of course, you can sell all the same products on all platforms. So if you import a product like this, you can sell it on eBay, Amazon, and your own website. Now you can't let you can't ship your eBay sales with Amazon. Um, in the spring seller release, eBay specifically said, "Do not ship orders for eBay." Um, buyers from Amazon. Is everyone clear on that? Any questions so far? It's all quiet so far. Yes? I'm just trying to get my head around the territories. For example, we import a product from America mm -hmm. and they have an Amazon store that they don't sell into Australia. Right. And then we can set up an Amazon store in Australia, but where can we sell to just to Australia? No, you can sell worldwide. But into America, not that anyone would buy it. Yes, you certainly can. Yeah. Totally. You can do it with FBA or FBM. Isn't the shipping more expensive? Sorry? Isn't the shipping more expensive from here? Yeah, it is. The shipping from Australia is expensive. Yeah. But people pay it. You know, uh, for a long time before you know, Amazon was in Australia, we were shipping from Australia. I think in America they've protected their store though somehow. Like they don't yeah, have any other unauthorised sellers on there. Yeah. I, I think it would depend for her on um, what the agreement or contractual agreement for that product would be. Yeah, okay. Is there a contract or agreement on they that product? Have a contract we wanted to do the same thing with Amazon Australia, how hard is that? Oh, well, that means, yeah, you're, you're going to have to check on the contract for that product, if there is. If there is. I, was, I was assuming this was just a Chinese product being sold in America. Now, if it's an American product, yeah, 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 you'll have to check on that. Thanks, Lincoln. Lincoln's an accountant, so he, he's, he's monitoring everything I so. say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, so our job as an eBay Amazon sellers is simply to, to find what the market's already wants and fulfill that market needs. Or as it says here, identify and fulfill market needs. Now the difference between a small eBay seller and a large one, this is so basic but so many people really don't get their head around it, is a big business has just got more proven products. Like the way, if anyone's read my last book, I know I talk about this all the time, but each leaf is a product and each leaf, each product sells over and over because we need new products and because they're new products, they sell over and over and over again. So the more products you have, the more revenue you make. So many people in here would have hobby-sized businesses. If you put all those hobby-sized businesses together, you've now got quite a large business, probably a full-time business and a lot, lot further beyond. And of course, the difference between a hobby business and a professional business is a professional business makes more than the award wage. Another way to look at it is many streams make a river. <coughs> 